Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on the test of ISTQB examination on the foundation level. We are in chapter 5 now and we are looking today on the 5.3, the test progress monitoring and control. And we'll be talking in more detail about the same what we have started in chapter 1. So specifically speaking about the test progress monitoring and control at K1 level here that we know the process of the test monitoring which is generally called as the measuring of the progress over on the project that uh, if the things are going as per the schedule or the plan what we have defined and these activities are being performed if there is a deviation we would require a control action to be implemented to overcome those barriers and deviations uh, during the execution so test monitoring is a uh, entire project ongoing task which is generally performed by a test analyst or maybe the test manager of the organization where the matrices are selected by the manager during the planning itself and also the interval of the monitoring or evaluation of those matrices will be defined as a part of it. Now generally whenever we move into the different stages of the fundamental test process these matrices are being evaluated from time to time on the fixed interval allocated and based on these evaluations managers are supposed to take certain necessary actions or corrective actions which would require at that point of time and obviously to decide during the monitoring process that when a control action is necessary to be implemented that is when you see a deviation or some kind of gap from the what from the activities what you have planned and what is exactly happening. So that would be another important uh, responsibility of the test manager to take a call on and also understand if there are need of more test cases to be added at that point of time to improvise your testing and make it more efficient. So here are typical a uh, list of the test matrices uh, which you can have a look on uh, which can help you one or the other way to measure uh, the different dimensions of testing where we have like percentage of planned work done in the test case preparation like um, what we were expecting to do on each day and what is that we are doing uh, on each day is what is that you measure here as a part of it similarly the percentage of work done in the test environment preparation that this will help you measure that whether the environment will be ready on time before the execution or not similarly the test execution rate defect information uh, test coverage of the requirements, uh, user stories, acceptance criteria, risk or code, and the task completion, resource allocation, and all. So as you see here, we have got different matrices to measure different dimensions of testing. It is just not limited to the coverage test or something. We have matrix for the activities. We have matrix for risk. We have matrix for test. We have matrix for you know defects, uh, confidence, uh, and anything else what you can think about. So any such thing what you perform as a part of the process can be measured and tracked with help of matrices. And these are just few of them as an example to assist you to understand what the test matrices are. But beyond that, obviously, in test manager advanced level, you will be looking at all the possible matrices what you can really have to measure your entire process so right now your understanding is limited to these matrices for just to get a question on that like what could be one of the matrix to measure a certain entity like this and they can ask you a straightforward question on this so that's all from here like when you look at the next topic the test uh, reporting which is generally conducted as a part of uh, the test process in the fourth stage if you remember we have got evaluating exit criteria and reporting so in the previous tutorial we already dealt with entry and exit criteria now we are talking about the reporting where test uh, reporting generally means uh, preparing the test summary report which is again a responsibility of the test manager who writes it at the end of uh, sign off like when you say uh, once the exit criteria is evaluated and you have finally concluded your testing activities and you have said we are stopping testing then the last activity what a test manager performs is writing the test summary report which is generally containing all the major activities conducted towards achieving the goal of testing so 
these activities will be summarized will not have any kind of detail for example we won't be giving them how many test cases we have executed and each test case details there now we'll be just giving them an overall approach that okay we wrote around 500 test cases and this was the ratio distribution on the risk if we have done a risk analysis and similarly we'll be giving them the weightage execution that is how many test cases passed how many test cases failed then the defects comes into picture how many defects were severity one s1 p1 and all those p1 defects are have been closed at this point of time and many other things on the summarized way so putting it all together these these informations are gathered to just give a summary report that what we have done towards testing as a deliverable to the client which client can also look at to see that what testing effort you have conducted so that we can also be reliable when you deliver the product to the market so you can see some of the legends here like summary of the testing performed information on what occurred during a test period deviation from the plan if there were any and what control action you have taken to overcome that status of testing product quality with respect to the exit criteria or definition of done matrices of what we have evaluated to measure which could you know also help uh, the client to understand that what were your effort towards the monitoring process and the residual risk to certain extent you also add that which can be a part of your exit criteria as well that is to showcase to the client that these are the risks which we identified but did not occur during the testing process so maybe we can have a contingency plan for that and when things happen we will take next reactions to do that even in the real time a reuse, reusable test work products uh, what we have produced that is for the future reuse or maybe for the maintenance testing team which will be passed on to them anyways so we do document such things as a part of the test summary report and prepared by the test manager of the organization the next thing in this tutorial is about test control so test control is any such guiding or corrective actions which are taken as a result of monitoring of the matrices at any point of time if you see that if your process is getting deviated from the one which is scheduled or planned then you take the necessary control action at that point of time to overcome such barriers or deviations in the project which basically helps you to bridge the gap because if this if, if this gap keeps on expanding then obviously that will create a big chaos during the mid of the project or maybe does not let you complete the project and could lead to the suspension termination of the project as well so for a test manager is really important at this point of time to be prepared for with such control actions which would be taken at any point of time so a general practice says that uh, a test manager must have prepared a control or an alternate plan for all the planned activities during the test planning and parallelly have those control actions in place and ready to uh, to be defined or like implemented uh, when it comes so the some of uh, the examples of the test control action are listed here like reprioritizing the test when an identified risk occurs changing the test schedule due to availability or unavailability of a test environment or the resource for example if you talk about analysis as well if the requirement is not available then we can reschedule it to some later date or if it is available little early then we can you know pre-schedule it so that the testing team can get involved and many other things we can have there like environment resources test the code the documentation and so on reevaluating whether a test item meets an entry or exit criteria due to rework for example there are uh, things which are being modified from time to time for example the code itself so when it is modified we do cross check with the uh, entry criteria that now after these modification does it meet the entry criteria though you would have already evaluated the entry criteria and after evaluating if the code or another component of that changes then you reevaluate such things as a part of control action to make sure that we do not lead into a big issue tomorrow so things are there which we can plan and for each plan activity we create a control action which could basically prepare us with a backup plan or a control or corrective action which would lead or help us to avoid such deviations in the project and do execution smoothly and deliver it on time 
So that's all from this tutorial. Uh, we have been through some of the basic concepts of the monitoring and control. We'll be looking ahead to go with more details on the other topics of this chapter in the upcoming tutorial. So stay tuned for more updates and obviously the tutorials on the chapter 5. So till then, uh, keep watching and keep learning. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and uh, Till then, enjoy learning, happy learning, take care.